I don't think them as futuristic. I think, think of them like extrapolations of that era's technology. So, so if I would to do, that's also something that kind of is interesting on the horizon to do something which is like real futurism, where you see where things are hmm. really heading right now and see what, try to ex, try to extrapolate uh, the contemporary technology, and then then it would look very different, I think, uh, visually. And and are these? Are you doing this? Uh, are you painting these, or are these solely on your computer? These are, these are all done in. in for, I, I have to show you some. Please do. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was about to do that, right? And I did you want? Yeah, go uh, through. Yeah, I was going through the photos and uh, got distracted. I got distracted by a photo, and uh, it's a very good slice of my life. Uh, let's see here. So these are all. I'm gonna take something that looks good. These are like close-ups of a. Uh, uh, light again. <laughs> After your scan, yeah. Mm. So maybe this is good here. This is a photo from that's the moon actually. So this is like a um, midsummer's night kind of atmosphere. Um, let's take that. And I open. And I have a few pictures often from the same, like I take it in, in different angles and try to cover as much of the scene as possible. And mm -hmm. uh, I take it into Photoshop like this. And I always take it, shoot in raw format so I can um, edit it and kind of adjust everything like this. Um, so the, I spend a lot of time just to finding like the right mood in the photo. And this is a picture near to your cabin? Yes, yeah, just outside the cabin, actually. Oh. So this is, uh, let's make it a little less blue, like that. And add some, yeah, that's cool. Quite relaxing, isn't it? Yeah. We can put some music on. <laughs> so let's let's just um, take it in this state here. Where is it? Oh, did I lose it? Hey, it's a good thing it remembers what I just did. Yeah. So come on. There it is. So. Well, I, first of all, I don't like the moon. <laughs> Let's do that. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Yeah. And then this is uh, this is how I sketch. I just um, this is I have no respect at all for the photo, and it doesn't have to look fancy at all. It's just something like that, and it's too. I think it's too square, and I want to make it wider. So I do some ass tiling, as we call it, <laughs> uh, which is that. You know what I mean, uh, uh, and this is yeah, this is good, and because now I can like, expand my canvas and the whole scene like this, and this is a good plate. It's like totally empty, so I can do whatever I want in this. And normally, when you when you design like objects, you would you would do thumbnails like um, you would have like just a white. Uh, document like this and you would do all these silhouettes um, to, to find your, like if you're going to do a spaceship, you would try different um, silhouettes. Maybe this one is, yeah. You would try very quick uh, sketches like this to see, uh, to, to find the shape that you'd like. Uh, but th that's good when you do the, when you, when your actual task is to to create a design. But if you're doing like a, this big illustration, I, I I skip that part and and do it inside this uh, uh, this sketch. Uh, and if I don't have a photo, sometimes I don't use photos because I it's like a scene that I don't have any references of. And then I just build up like an atmosphere. 
uh, and, and start doing the designs inside that. It's like a basic composition. So I, like in this case, I, I would find my darkest dark and go start doing some silhouettes here. There's a big blob. We've uh, lost signal oh. on it. Yep, there we go. The spaceship is back. It looks kind of desaturated up there, but it's OK. So I don't know what this is yet. Um, so it feels like you, so you're mixing landscapes of home with um, objects that you have a kind of a personal connection to that takes you back to your childhood. Yeah, that, yeah exactly. But at this stage, this is just having fun with um, shapes. So um, uh, this is like the most explorative part uh, artistically. And, and I know if I find a shape here that's interesting, let's, let's pretend this is interesting. Uh, like, like that. OK, th this is some kind of crashed thing. Wires here. Uh, oh, maybe it's on the. Is it me? Who's yeah, there we go. Okay, so I will add some values to this. Now that I have a silhouette that I like, I start doing values here, <laughs> like adding surfaces. Um, So as you're going through this process, is there any, any questions from, um, from the audience that you'd like to, to, to ask, Simon? Is it, it's not there. We get there. Can you multitask? Uh, let's see. I'm very bad <laughs> at that. My, my wife, she, uh, she's going to divorce me because of my lack of multitasking. <laughs> well, she can speak to me for like 15 minutes and I, I won't answer. Uh, it's, I'm a horrible person, actually. That's really, I mean, and I'm like, yeah, but I'm so focused, um, which means I'm not focused at her at all, so, which is a, yeah. Let's try it. So there was a question there. A lot of your work seems like it's inspired by playing outside as a child. Yeah. When I see kids today playing augmented reality video games on their cell phones or just uh, saying inside, not playing out, outside at all, do you feel like somebody who does your kind of work or is inspired the way you've been inspired could grow up today? Uh, uh, let's see if I got that right. Like, uh, do I see like um, uh, uh, something bad with that technology? Yeah. Could your uh, could your kind of inspiration come with uh, ever present video games? Like you mean like uh, if if you all, if all the external input you got was from a, like a video game? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, they would, I mean, there's just, there's just this limit to how well you can, even if you're a, the best designer in the world, you can't, you don't have the man hours to create a, an alternate universe because how do you, I mean, there's so, it's, it's um, there's, there's some, the, 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 like, if, if you would have that kind of video game, let's say it's uh, Grand Theft Auto, 15, uh, where you can do everything, uh, it would still be like every single thing would be designed and, and I mean, you no, it's, it's still, it's still just, uh, I don't think you would ever get close to the kind of kickback that reality has. You, uh, so so uh, I'm not sure, but, but I, I do think that having that kind of technology and um, as a kid, I think that's just, it's going to make you like want to explore more and take that as, just as you do with uh, contemporary video games. You play it and then you go outside and you play. And you I think it's the same. I don't think it has changed that much. I think maybe kids play a little bit more today, but it's. Uh, I don't think that you're ever gonna like have. I don't think you're gonna have games that are so good that you don't want reality. I, I, I mean, not in the foreseeable future anyway. Um, because then it would have to be reality, and I, I don't see how that would, how that would like, 
How but you, but you've yeah. drawn a lot of your inspiration from being out in nature and using your imagination in, in that context. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, somebody drawing it. I mean, so, so this, this person then would draw pictures from Second Life. Like, that's my childhood. That's horrible. But, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm getting old, and maybe that's cool. Any, yeah, a question down again, here. Uh, good. I, I can add, maybe this is more a question to the um, other programmers who identify or who, who like your pictures a lot, maybe, or maybe it's a question to you, I don't know, but is, there, is, is, is it possible that, that programmers tend to like your stuff because we kind of created our, the beginning of our identity as, as nerds and programmers? right there at that bus stop, you know, like going yeah. with our Commodore 64 or whatever to our friend's house and like, you know, copying tapes from each other, yeah. trying to boot it with some kind of... Yeah, but I think, yeah, I think that's... Uh, but I think the, the mystery is why, like, I mean, all, the, most uh, people have that kind of background in Sweden. Uh, of doing those stuff, but yeah, of course. Yeah, but the, our identity now is built from there. Yeah, yeah. It's not built from what I studied at university. No. Of course, that is in, but no. it started already yeah. there in my identity. Yeah, I think, and I think maybe Sweden has been have such a success in IT, maybe because we had so many kids learning at home and not at university, and exactly. and and having like parents and, and uncles and. and um, p p people who, who taught them and there were computers around and stuff like that. I think maybe that, that's a, a, a connection there that you did this. And programming is very much like building your own universe in a way. Uh, so when, I guess when you're a kid, that's uh, like from my developer friends, that, that, that was what they were doing when they were... Yeah, exactly. Morning. You were in the demo scene, right? Sorry? You were in the demo scene. Yeah. Right? And which kind of so hardware did you? I did this on a PC and, and um, like those. Our <laughs> <laughs> um, impulse tracker is like a text-based tracker, and and uh, uh, my friends were they were I don't remember what, which language they were programming in, but yeah, it was very they, they, it was very simple, and we didn't get far. It was like bouncing balls and stuff like that. Um, but it still we we were. Um, we were just like started doing it just after like uh, the the party was over. I mean, just when like dice were when they were founded and and but those all of those people come from that background and and you, we saw the, their kind of demos and was in awe. So, but and and of course, like when I when I do pictures like this. Uh, it's kind of aimed at people who use computers, uh, and <laughs> obviously. Hmm. So, yeah. I don't remember your original question, uh, <laughs> and I haven't answered it. I think you did. Yeah, I think we've got time for maybe one more question. Is there someone? Yeah. Oh, and there's one at the back, so maybe. Uh, I have a question. Uh, yes. This narrative you have here, yeah. have you considered letting others explore it like in a comic book format, like a one-off with a story or something? E yeah, actually I, I've talked to some other uh, writers about doing, I mean it's very loose, but we talked about it, it would be fun to do some collaborative love, like short stories, a collection of short stories in this universe. But we're also making a role-playing game of, uh, in this setting uh, with um, my publisher, uh, they, 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 they are a bunch of roping nerds and they do they have they do mutant uh, and we're gonna make they, like they are gonna make and, and, and write this role playing game and that's gonna be so awesome because they, we're gonna kind of explore all the how, how this works and, and get like the numbers from everything like how strong the repulsor lift is and stuff like that yeah thank you and I think there was one last question bit further up if you could hmm? you have time to focus yeah hi big fan uh, thank you I sorry for not looking at you it's I can't if I could I would <laughs> no, no, it's I fine. You need to focus. <laughs> so I was thinking about that guy who wrote you from Siberia and said this looks really like Siberia when I first saw your pictures it was 
linked from the verse, a site called Boing Boing, uh, I immediately thought, wow, this looks like Chernobyl. <laughs> uh, well, it's Kungsberga. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, well, I see what you mean. I, I, there's, uh, when extrapolating the stuff that we had around, laying around, you would, on, on the way of extrapolating towards science fiction, you pass Soviet on the way because they have everything but much more grand. So it's not, I mean, of course, it's, uh, um, yeah, I can see how that happens. Was that an answer? Uh, I guess, were you inspired by Chernobyl? Yes. Were you affected by that in your childhood? Uh, no, I didn't know about it uh, until, I mean, I was two years old when that happened and and I mean, it wasn't very interesting then uh, in terms of like uh, visually, aesthetically, it was just an uh, evacuated town. But like now it's pretty awesome when it's when nature has taken over and stuff like that. But yeah, well, I mean, of course, but everybody who does science fiction has their folder of um, Pripyat photos, which is the town uh, next to the plant. So, so and uh, but sure, I, I mean, I, I was always uh, like from my late teens, I started like visiting like abandoned factories and stuff like that. So I'm taking pictures of that. So yeah, I, of course, had I had an opportunity to visit Chernobyl or Russia, like Soviet in or Russia, in that uh, when I started doing these pictures, I would have. I mean, of course, it's it's awesome. It would have been awesome. Uh, but Kungsberg is as close as I got. <laughs> So we're actually out of time. Yeah. So. Um, do you want to just talk about that just, just to finish up? Uh, yeah, this is a, a perfect example of what I wouldn't continue working on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but this is the, this, the, that, this kind of process. And, and well, that's a very, I mean, that, that is very important, like doing stuff that, and, and discarding it yeah. uh, and, and try a new, try a new angle and just keep going through the, the photos and keep going through references until you find an idea. That works. And, and, and how long did I spend on this? Maybe like 10, 15 minutes. At that point, if, if it isn't working, it isn't working. I, I, there's no point in, I have to, like, I can start, maybe I can find another shape in here that works. Or, but by that time, if, if I haven't found an idea that I like, it's a good idea to move on, mm. I think. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And are there any uh, closing remarks? Anything? that you want to finish up? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I should have written something down. I, I don't know. Uh, well, uh, if, if, if you want to like, take, take something with you from this, I, I guess it's like hobby projects uh, to, to, to give them your love and, and believe in them. And, and, and if you don't feel that you have, uh, if you feel like, because I have friends who do, uh, have all these hobby projects, and, but you don't really, they like having like a uh, nine-to-five job, and they like having like order in, in their life and uh, a tidy living room. And uh, they have come to realize, like, yeah, it's not for me. Maybe I should ha have like do it just for fun, like uh, a few hours a month or something. But if you re are really passionate about your project, you should take it seriously and and give it like invest in it because it even if it doesn't pay off like in financially, it it's. Um, I mean, for me, I would, I wouldn't, I would. Uh, this is what I would have done anyway. Like, if if nobody cared about this, I would still do them. And it's so rewarding just to have that. And and as you move along, I did it for two years. And after two years, I realized, yeah, I have a bunch of pictures. Here. This is just getting more and more fun. So it's a good thing to just stick to your to your projects, I, I guess. And yeah, take them seriously. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Simon Silenhag. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much, yeah. So that's it. That is Erdev 2015 finished. So uh, we wish you uh, a safe journey home and have a restful weekend. Um, enjoy whatever you do. And um, yeah, last round of applause for Simon. <laughs>